Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I'm going to show you how to make some really cool reusable gift bags. Aren't they pretty? They're so much nicer than the dollar store bags that we use. And what's better is that these will last more than a time or two. So, you know, you can give a gift in this and then it can be passed along, which is really, really great and fun and good for the environment. I want to thank our sponsor today, Paper Mart. That's where I got these really cool bags that I'm decorating today. You can check them out online at www.papermart.com. They are your best source for packaging and more. They also have bags made out of other fabrics such as organza, velvet, and burlap. So whatever you need, they've got it with the best price. Guaranteed. Well, I don't know if they guarantee it, but I would almost guarantee it because that seems to be the case. I am... <laughs> this is take two or three. Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right, so what we're going to do here is uh, we're going to do some spray misting and some stamping. You're going to want to have an iron handy in an ironable surface, like a silicone mat or an ironing board. Something preferably that if you get it inky, it's not a big deal. This is my craft iron, not my upstairs iron clothes iron. Not that I iron clothes, but you get the gist. And we're going to use some stencils. And um, here I have a stencil that I just, uh, it was actually left over from for, um, some uh, turkey feathers that I cut uh, for a kid's craft. And I thought the stencil looked so cool that I kept it. So what I'm going to do is just spray this, and I'm going to use a couple different colors. I'm going to try to keep my thumb on the paper so it's not going to be in the way of the sprayer. And I'm going to start with some yellow, and um, if you are interested in making these spray mists, I have a video on that. If you look right there, there should be a clicky thing that you can click, and uh, it'll take you right to that video if you are so inclined to watch it. And you can do a couple different colors, or you can do it one color. It's just a fun, uh, just a fun thing just to play and practice with. You know, get a package of these bags and just go right to town. It's a lot of fun. Now that looks really pretty fun just the way it is. Um, now to dry this quickly and also heat set it so we can stamp on top of it, we're simply going to hit it with the old iron. So I've just set this down on my silk hat mat, which you can't see because that's right there. Um, and I'm going to put a piece of just plain uh, scrap paper on there. Um, it's a, just an old sheet of letterhead and I cut the letterhead part off because if it was on a um, done with a thermal machine, such as a photocopier or a uh, laser printer, I would end up transferring that image with the heat. So if you don't want that to happen, make sure you have plain paper <laughs> and you'll be all set. And also, if you're using something that had a um, inkjet printed image, if it hit water, if it was put up against something damp, that would also transfer it. So if you want to do a transfer, that's just fine and dandy, but if you don't, then stick to some plain paper. <laughs> all right, so that is iron so it's been one heat set so the colors aren't going to run on you and two it's been dried off so we can do some stamping here's some of the bags that i finished a few minutes ago i don't know if i showed you those it's been so many takes i can't keep it straight <laughs> but there you, you know we're gonna make some of those very very fun very easy very quick and uh, i'm just gonna stamp a butterfly and here i have a clear stamp by uh, i think this one's oriental trading um, I like the clear stamps for this because they have more squish, and so they, they uh, will stay up on the fabric much better. I got hair on my face. <laughs> That's what that, that move was. Not about doing something, not having an episode or anything. <laughs> oh, Lindsay is silly today. All right, and I like these curved stamp mounts because they also work really well if you're trying to stamp on something that's not the absolute smoothest of paper. Ah, lovely. Isn't that pretty? Now that's all it really needs, but you can go ahead and add more embellishing to it if you like. Now something else you might want to try is actually using a detailed stencil such as this birdcage one from the Crafters Workshop um, and using that as your image. But first you probably want to color up your bag a little bit. So again, you just want to take a plain bag and clip it to your piece of cardboard, which, ah, here it is. I haven't lost it. I thought, oh no, I probably lost it. Um, so just clip it on with a couple of clothespins. Or you can hold it with your uh, with your thumb, but it's really hard to give an all-over spray without getting your thumbprints in there. My grubby paws. I'm gonna keep my grubby paws off of that because they are grubby by now. I've got like green and black fingernails. <laughs> Gross. And I'm just gonna give it a little color, a little yellow color. And oh, so if you want a smoother uh, smoother spray, you want to start back further. And you'll probably hit your floor, and if your dog's sleeping at your feet like mine is, your dog a little bit too. Ah, she's a golden retriever. As long as I keep it with yellow or brown, I'll be all set. All right, so there. I've given it just kind of an all-over color. Again, I want to press it because I uh, want to... You really want to have a dry background if you're going to try to spray stencil over it and keep some sort of definition. So again, my scrap paper on top of my bag. And I'm ironing and I'm ironing. 
I'm pretty good for someone who doesn't iron other than in the craft room. <laughs> All right, it only takes a couple seconds. And you want to heat set every layer if you want to make sure that it's not going to run um, on you. All right, so now we're going to do the uh, birdcage stencil, which is really pretty. And I'm going to clip those together on my board. I want to make sure it's fairly dry. I think I'm just going to clip a piece of scrap paper under there just in case the layers underneath aren't dry. I'm not going to be staining up the back of my bag. And uh, the cool thing is the colors don't seep through to the other side. They're just thick enough. But if it worried you, you could always put a piece of cardboard in there or something. Let's give that a little clip. Oh, i got to make sure of that pin isn't going to be in the way. And then when you're doing something detailed like this, you're going to have to hold this up a little bit with your finger. Try to find a piece of the plastic that doesn't have any image on it because you really want to have it tight up against the, um, the cardboard when you spray. And I'm just going to use my black because that is actually, you know what, maybe I'll use purple. That might be fun and interesting. Let's see if my purple is dark enough. I think purple would be pretty. I used black in the last one. That's kind of boring. Let's do something different, shall we? All right, I'm mixing it up as we go. I hope that's dark enough. Let's spray a little test. Yeah, we'll see, won't we? I may have to use a little black too. So I'm just going to give it a nice all over color. I think I do want that a little bit darker. So I'm going to go in with a little black uh, right here. And then move it really quick before it runs all over the place. Huzzah. And there you can see that. So now all I have to do is heat set that. And we're good. I want to thank Paper Mart for sponsoring our video today. Check them out online at www.papermart.com where we make you look even better. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.